Welcome back to Country Cow Designs. We produce sewing patterns for bag makers and in this tutorial we're going to be showing you how to make this, the Travel Light Duffel Bag. So this duffel bag was specifically designed because we were going on holiday uh, with Ryanair and they have a very specific requirement for personal luggage, which is the only bag that you can take for free. So technically it's supposed to be like a handbag, but this is the maximum size. We wanted to make sure that we maximized the size and used like could fit in as much as we possibly could. So that's what this duffel is all about. It's designed for travel, which means it's very quick to make. There's no interior pockets because when you've got all your stuff and your clothes crammed in there, you're not gonna be able to use them. It's got one exterior pocket for your passport and your ticket and that sort of thing. And the biggest thing about this bag is we have included all of the maths to adjust it. So if you're flying with a different airline, you can create the bag to be exactly the size that you need. So I've got an example here of one that we made. And this was made using the size requirements for American Airlines, which is an awful lot bigger than the Ryanair ones. So you guys get to take a lot of luggage for free. So <laughs> it's, it's got all of the same principles. When you're following the pattern, all of the instructions are the same. You just need to make sure that you use the maths pages. So if you hate maths, don't bother. Just, just stick to the pattern size. But if you want a size that is perfectly going to fit your requirements, then you can go ahead and all of the instructions are there. We tried to make it quite clear and succinct. What you do is you end up creating your own cutting chart for the pattern pieces. So it's not too complicated. And that way you get a bag that's exactly the size you need. If you're looking for inspiration on fabrics to use and color schemes to go for and things like that, check out our tester photos. So our pattern testers have all made some beautiful bags and these are all included in the photos on the web listing for the pattern. So they're just great for getting some ideas and inspiration on how to customize and how to make your bag look really unique. So you can probably tell we've been using these two quite a lot. These are the ones that we've been taking with us down to the beach and things. This one's a little bit sandy. Um, as I said, on the inside, we haven't got any pockets. We've just got a big open lining. So it really is a quick bag to make. So let us know in the comments what you're gonna be doing with your bag. Are you gonna be taking it on holiday? Are you gonna be taking it to the beach? Are you just going for a weekend away? Let us know what you'll be planning to use yours for. You can either watch this video tutorial and just see how it's made, or you can sew along with me and purchase the sewing pattern from countrycowdesigns.com. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I hope you enjoy this video tutorial. For this tutorial, we'll be using the standard size that's in the pattern. So if you're customizing your size, the pattern does include all the instructions to do that. And then you can follow the pattern instructions, um, all of the measurements and everything for marking your handles, all of that is the same but this tutorial is gonna be based on using the standard measurements from the pattern. So if your bag looks slightly different as you're working your way through, that will just be because if you're cutting it at a different size, it's gonna be like different height versus width. So it might look slightly different, but you just can follow the instructions the same way. So I've got all of my pattern pieces cut out and prepared. All of the pattern pieces are rectangles for this pattern, which means you can just cut them all from the measurements in the cutting chart if you want. You don't actually need to print the pattern pieces. That's, they are provided if you want to, but that's totally up to you. So I've got all of my stabilizers cut out and I've got the extra base stabilizer as well to have a really sturdy base. For my lining, I'm using a simple waterproof canvas. I'm also using waterproof canvas for the binding. Then I've got my webbing handles my hardware and my zips. And for the exterior, I'm using this beautiful printed canvas from Blended Thread Fabrics. I'll make sure that I link in the video description all the sources for my supplies in case you're wondering. You can use a variety of materials for this bag. If you're using cotton or canvas, make sure that you interface it with a medium weight woven interfacing. Um, but that's pretty much it. The stabilizer will give you the firmness for the bag, even if you're using fabrics such as cotton. Step one was preparation, so we're going to move straight on to step two now, which is straps and handles. For this step, you should have a couple of one inch pieces of webbing for your handles. You should also have another two small ones for the 
strap tabs for the D-rings. You're going to have your one and a half inch piece of webbing for your crossbody strap. You'll also need a few rivets, two hooks and a strap slider for your crossbody strap. So to make the crossbody strap, what we're going to do, we're just going to feed one end of it over this center bar here of the slider. And then to hide the raw edge, we're going to fold it back on itself. Just like that. And then I'm going to fit two rivets through here to hold it in place. To get a neat finish for my rivets, what I'm going to use is my rivet template. If you haven't got one of these, you can just measure it, but I do find this really helpful. Then I've got a hole punch. And I've just got that on the two millimeter setting and I'm gonna punch through those holes that I marked. So just pop your rivets through and put the cap on. And then I'm gonna take this over to the press and I've got a hand press that I'm gonna to use to set these. If you don't have a hand press, you can use a hand setting tool with a hammer. Okay, so now those are set. I am going to take the other end of this crossbody strap and I'm gonna put it through one of the swivel hooks and then back over this center bar. So just make sure that when you pull it all tight that it's straight, it hasn't got a twist in it or anything like that. So that's how it should look on that end. Now with the other end, I'm going to wrap it around this swivel hook and I'm gonna do the same as I did with the slider and wrap the edge underneath so it's hidden, so that raw edge isn't on the show. And again, I'm gonna fit two rivets here to hold it in place. Once your crossbody strap is done, you can just set that aside and we're gonna start with the strap connectors. So you should have two of these and you wanna mark them each in the center like so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring one edge into that center mark and stick it in place. So I'm just gonna use a bit of double-sided tape here and pull that in like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, but I'm gonna add the D-ring. I'm also just gonna add a couple of clips to keep that in place until later. And I'll do the exact same thing with this piece. So that's your crossbody strap and your strap connectors prepared. And now we can move on to the next step. Step three is the exterior zip pocket. For this step, you're gonna need your smaller zip. You're also gonna need your zip pocket facing, two zip pocket pieces, and one exterior main panel. Now on my pocket facing, on the wrong side of the fabric, I've marked this box. So this is shown in the diagram in the pattern. I've also marked just down from the top edge. So all the measurements for this are in the pattern. And I've also marked the center here. So I've drawn a line, make sure that for this step you're using a removable fabric pen. So one that erases with heat or disappears after time. So I've got my line here to show where this is gonna go. I've also marked the centers. So I'm just gonna match those up. Now what I wanna do is pin this in place, but make sure that you're pinning within this box. That way, if you've got a fabric such as cork or waterproof canvas that doesn't heal, um, then it doesn't matter because this part is gonna be cut out. So I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew this box here. Now, when you get to these corners, you want to shorten your stitch length. I go down to about a one, so a really short stitch length. It will ensure that you get a neater finish on these corners.
So now we're going to snip these lines. So you're going to cut through both layers of fabric as you do this. And what we want to do is be really careful with these corners here. We want to snip as close as you possibly can get, but you do not want to cut your stitching. You might find this easier with a craft knife. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I want to get a nice neat finish for this pocket facing. So I'm going to roll it, roll it with a seam presser. So if you are using cotton, you can just use the iron to do this and just press it with the iron. Okay, now we've done all four edges, we're going to push this through to the back. Okay, and then on the back I'm going to roll it again. just want to get a nice neat edge on all four edges, so if you have cotton just go ahead and use the iron. It's a little bit easier and it will give you a really nice finish. Okay now as I'm using waterproof canvas you can see it doesn't really want to stay so I'm going to use a little bit of double-sided tape to persuade it to stay in place. Okay, so you just want to check it from the outside because you want this to look really neat. You don't really want that lining piece to be on show. Okay, and now we're happy with that. We're just going to set that aside and grab your two pocket pieces and your zip. So I'm going to fit my zip pull at the end just to make it slightly easier. Now I've got one of my pieces. I'm going to place the zip right side up on the top edge. So if you have a directional print, this is the top edge. So the pocket is right side up, the zip is right side up. I'm going to clip them together. And we're going to sew this with a scant quarter inch seam allowance, which is slightly less than a quarter inch. Okay, so I'm going to grab the other pocket piece. I want this one to be right side up. And I'm going to take the zip and put the zip right side up on that pocket piece and just clip those together. And I'm going to sew that with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. So what we want now is for the right side of the zip to be on the wrong side of the fabric, which is what we've got. But we want this zip to lay nice and flat. Now, if you're using waterproof canvas like me, you can see it's kind of biting me on it. If you're using cotton, you can just press this with the iron. Watch out for a hot zip, um, but it should then lay flat. Because mine doesn't want to lay flat, I'm going to top stitch it along the very edge of the zip within the seam allowance on both sides. Now, if you haven't already put your zip pull on, don't forget to put it on now. It'll be too late in a minute. So I'm just going to slip mine on there. Okay, so my zip is closing to the left. What we're going to do is we're going to place this on top. And you want this pocket facing that you've got to line up with the pocket there. Now to hold it in place while we sew it, I'm going to use a little bit of fabric glue on the edges of the zip. Take your time to make sure this is centered and that it's looking really neat because it will make quite a difference to how the finished bag looks. Now what I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to top stitch around this rectangle and I'm going to use a slightly longer stitch length for top stitching. When top stitching this pocket, make sure that both pocket pieces are fully open. Okay, so that's it top stitched. So what we're going to do now is flip it over and you're going to fold the top one down. So you just want to kind of make sure that it's laying pretty flat. 
And then we need to trim this longer piece so it matches. Okay, so if you're making a custom size for this bag and your pocket's too long, just trim your pocket so it's not too long. You just wanna make sure it's not gonna be anywhere near the seam allowance. So we're gonna clip both of these pocket pieces together. And then we just need to sew the sides and the bottom of the pocket. To do that, you can just kind of pull it all away and just sew it like that on your machine. That way you're not gonna stitch through the main panel by accident. So that is your zip pocket done. If you want to add a handmade badge or like a custom logo badge, I'd recommend fitting it now, probably on this front panel, but just watch out for the pocket as you do that. Now we can set that aside and move on to the next step. Step four is the main panels. For this step, you're gonna need your two webbing handles, your two main lining pieces, your two exterior main panel pieces, and the two stabilizer pieces as well. So the first thing that we're gonna do is on these stabilizer pieces, we're gonna cut a corner out of each side. So this is gonna be about an inch by an inch. It doesn't need to be specific, but what we're just doing is reducing the bulk for later on so that we get neat corners on the finished bag. Okay, so we're gonna start by grabbing the stabilizer and placing one of the exterior panels right side up onto it. Now you wanna make sure that your pocket is lying flat. It's not bunched up or anything. And I'm just gonna place a couple of clips on there. Okay, so as you're clipping this, what you wanna do is make sure that the fabric is nice and tight. So kind of almost sort of stretching it to make sure that it's nice and tight on the stabilizer. Okay, now flip that over and you're gonna put your lining right side up. So both fabrics are facing right side out. Okay, now I'm happy with that. I'm gonna baste around the edges here. If you're using a domestic sewing machine, you can use a zigzag stitch and it will compress the foam just for a really nice, neat finish. When sewing the front panel, watch out for the zip pocket. It's gonna kind of pull the exterior top down. So just make sure that it's sitting correctly as you baste it in place. I've also done the exact same thing with the other panel. So I'm gonna baste the edges of that one at the same time. For the next couple of steps, you're going to have to refer to the pattern. So we've got some measurements in the pattern and I've, I've made my marks and I've drawn my lines to where I need them. And I've also marked my handles. So what we're gonna do first of all is fold the end of the handle up to the line that I've marked and stick that in place. So I'm gonna do the same thing on both sides of the handle. Okay, now on the right side of the handle, away from the fold that we've got there, I'm also gonna mark it in from each edge. As always, make sure that you're using a raisable fabric pen. So now that's marked, I'm gonna put some more double-sided tape on the back side of the handle. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place it on the mark. So I've got, I've got a line coming down here and a little mark here. So I'm gonna place it on the center side. Make sure that it's following the line all the way so then you know that your handle is nice and straight and it should be sitting on the bottom mark just here. Now it should be covering over your zip corners. That is exactly how we want this to be. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sew a box around here using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. We're also gonna do a big X through here. We are sewing through a lot of layers because we've got the pocket in here as well. So make sure that you're using an appropriate needle and if necessary, you can hand crank over this zip section here because this is where it's gonna get really bulky. 
Make sure you start in a corner so it's easy to get a nice neat X. And if you have it, use a matching thread color as that will really neaten up your handles. Okay, so if your lining is a different color, you can use a bobbin thread that matches your lining. That will give you a nice neat finish on the inside. So what we're gonna do is we're going to attach the other side now. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape again. And as I did before, I'm gonna place it on the center side of the line that I've drawn. Make sure it's straight going all the way up there. And again, your zip edge should be covered. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing as before. I'm gonna sew a box and do an X. Then I'm gonna do the same thing to fit the handle to my remaining panel. When you're sewing the X, this will give you an opportunity to sew the top and bottom lines twice, which is really good because we want these handles to be as strong as possible. So this is what it's gonna look like when you're done. So it's not the neatest finish on the inside, but this is really gonna make a difference to the strength of the handles. And at the end of the day, this is a practical bag. It's supposed to carry a lot of weight. So we want the handles to be nice and strong. Once your handles are sewn on, we've just got one last step for this section. So you can see I've drawn little squares in the corners of my panels. This is a 3 8 of an inch by 3 8 of an inch square. And what we're gonna do is chop them out so there's one on every corner of both panels. And this means that when we sew up to the seam, this corner is gonna be cut out already and it's gonna really reduce the bulk and give you a neater finish on the corners. Do the same thing with your second main panel and then we're gonna move on to the next step. Step five is the optional bottle pocket, which we're not gonna cover in this video, but it is covered in the pattern. So we're gonna go straight to step six, which is the gusset. For this step, you're gonna need your longer zip and I've got two zip pulls to go with mine. Got my two strap connectors from earlier, two zip gusset stabilizers and the main base stabilizer, my two exterior zip gusset pieces, two lining zip gusset pieces, my lining base gusset, and my exterior base gusset, which also we've got an extra base stabilizer for. So this is optional, but I really like a firm base, so that's what, why I've got this. I've already fused mine on, but I'm also gonna sew it. This is optional, and if you don't wanna sew it on, you don't have to. Um, but what I'm gonna do is sew it on all edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So just be aware that your stitching will show on the outside. If you wanted to, you could do like a decorative star or a quilt pattern or something as well, but I'm just gonna do the rectangle for this one. Now that's sewn on, I'm gonna grab my base stabilizer and I'm gonna trim the corners out again. So I want these triangles to be about an inch by an inch, but it doesn't have to be exact. This will really help reduce the bulk in the seams. So I'm gonna place that on the back of my exterior base gusset and I'm gonna clip that in place. Now that's clipped together, I'm gonna to baste it on all four edges and I'm gonna do it with the foam side up just because I'm getting a little bit of stretch with this fabric and by having it foam side up, it shouldn't stretch as I sew it. So I'm just gonna set that base piece aside and we're gonna start with the zip gusset now. So you can either put your zip pulls on now or you can do it at the end. So I'm gonna do it at the end so it's slightly easier to fit at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get one of my exterior pieces and I'm gonna place this zip right sides together with it and clip it together. And I'm just gonna baste that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. 
Now we're going to grab one of the lining zip pocket pieces and we're going to place it so this is right sides together with the exterior and clip those together. I'm going to sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance which is the edge of my presser foot. If you're using a domestic sewing machine where the needle moves you might find it easier to use a standard presser foot and move the needle over. By having the presser foot up against the zip teeth it ensures you get a nice straight finish. Okay so what I want to do now is press this away from the seam so I'm just going to give it a good press with the seam roller. If you are using cotton you can just use the iron and I'm going to do the same with the exterior and press it away from the zip so I can get a nice neat finish here. So I am going to take this over to the iron and give the exterior a little bit of a press with the iron. If you're using a waterproof canvas like I am just be careful, test first of all to check that it's not the type that melts. Now I'm going to clip this exterior and lining together and I'm going to sew the short edges and then top stitch this edge but we're going to leave this edge here, the clipped edge, unsewn. Now grab one of your stabilizers and again we're going to cut triangles out but we're only going to do it on two corners like that. We want that to be these corners here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slip this in between the lining and the exterior. Now you want to get that right up to the zip and then clip this long edge closed. Now I'm just going to baste that closed. Grab your other zip pocket piece for the exterior fabric and we're going to place this right sides together with that zip. Now if you have a directional print you just want to check that it's facing the way that you want it and we're going to clip those together. You can mark the centers for all your pieces and your zip and make sure that everything matches that way or when you're at this stage you can check that the sides line up here. Now I'm just going to baste that into place. Now flip that over, grab your remaining lining zip pocket piece and you're going to place that so this is right sides together with the first piece and you're clipping it to the same edge of the zip as you just did. So just clip those together and sew that with a quarter inch seam allowance. As we did with the other side we're just going to push both fabrics away from the zip and press the seam. So I'm going to take this over to the iron and press this exterior fabric to get a nice neat finish. Now that's pressed I've clipped it together and I'm going to top stitch this long edge and sew the two short edges. So to finish the zip gusset I'm going to do the same as we did on the other side and cut triangles out of two corners. Then I'm just going to slip this inside the gusset making sure that the cutout corners are on this open edge. Push that in as far as it will go and clip the edges together and I'm just going to baste that long edge. So if you didn't put your zip pulls on earlier now is definitely the time to do it, this is your last chance. So I'm going to put one on from each end so that they're closing toward each other. Now grab your exterior base gusset. What we're going to do is we're going to line up one of the short edges with the short edge of the zip gusset. They should be the same width but depends on exactly what seam allowance you used on your zip. So if it doesn't fit just don't worry just trim them down to match. Now we're just going to clip those together. I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine and just baste that edge. Now we're going to flip that over 
So we're looking at the lining side of this zip gusset. Grab your lining gusset base. You're going to place it so these fabrics are right sides together. Match it up on that same edge and clip together. I'm going to take that over to the sewing machine and sew this with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that's sewn, we're going to push this away from the seam. And then you want to do the same thing on the exterior side. You want to give it a good press, make sure that the seam is nice and neat. And then I'm going to put a couple of clips to hold the exterior and lining together here. And we're going to sew through this seam. So we're sewing on the base side and we're going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance to top stitch it. There's a lot of layers here so if your machine's struggling feel free to hand crank over the zip area where it's especially bulky. Okay so now what we're going to do we're going to grab the other end of the exterior base gusset and clip that so it's right sides together with this end and then we're just going to baste that in place. Now we're going to flip this over so we've got the lining side of the zip gusset and you're going to bring the other end of the lining base up to meet it. So we're just going to clip those together and sew that with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So we're going to pull this so that it's all going to end up right sides out. So you want the lining base and the exterior base to be wrong sides together. And then what we want to do is press this seam. So this is the seam that you've just sewn. Just get that all worked out. There we go. Okay, so this is the seam you just sewn. We're just going to press that and press the exterior too. And again, I'm going to put a few clips down here to hold the exterior and lining together. And now I'm going to sew that seam on the base side. I'm going to sew it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, if it gets a bit bulky around here, feel free to just hand crank over the zip. Okay, so now what we need to do is clip the edges of these base sides together. So I'm just going to flip it so it's the exterior sides out. And we need to clip these edges together so we can baste it. So I like to bring the sides together first of all. This helps me make sure that I get the centers matched up. And then I'm going to clip the rest together. Clip the other side too. Again, I find this best if you match up the center first, because sometimes it can feel like the lining's a little bit too big. It's not, it's just because of the stabilizer, but by matching up the center first, you can ensure that you get a nice neat fit. Now take that over to the sewing machine and baste both of those long edges. So now you've got the hard part. We need to attach the strap connectors um, and we're going to sew them through all the layers again just to make sure that they're really really strong. So in the pattern you've got some measurements for marking. You might be able to see mine there, there's just a purple mark there. Again use a, an erasable fabric pen. Now what we're going to do is attach one of the strap connectors. So it's on these marks. Make sure that it's straight. You can check that it's centered because it should be centered to the zip. And the join that you had on the back, um, like this one here, where the webbing joined, that should be underneath, so that's hidden. 
Now I'm going to sew this on. I'm going to sew as close as I can get to the D-ring. I'm going to use a hump jumper for that. And I'm going to create a box and then sew a big X through. And again, I'm going to double stitch at the top and the bottom just to make it really strong. Remember that your stitching will be visible on the inside of the bag, so it's worth changing your bobbin thread to one that matches your lining fabric. So this isn't the simplest part of the pattern, but this is the best way to get the extra strength and it doesn't look too bad. It's it, even on the inside, it's not that, it's not that messy. So long as you use a stitch that matches like the color, you're really not going to notice it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over. I'm going to fit my remaining strap connector here and do the exact same thing to sew it in place. Once you've got both of those strap connectors fitted in the same way, we're ready to move on to the final step. Step seven is final assembly. So this is the very last step. Now we've got our two main panels. So I'm just gonna set one aside and start with the front panel first of all. First thing that you want to do is mark the centers top and bottom on your gusset and on both of your exterior panels. Once your centers are marked, we're gonna clip this zip top edge right sides together with the main panel. So just match up those center marks to start with. And you'll notice that what should happen is that cutout should fit right into the seam on each side. So I'm gonna take that over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So I'm starting from the cutout corner right here and I'm going along and sewing to this side. Now, once we've sewn it, we're gonna snip in. So you can actually do this beforehand if you want. We're gonna snip in just here into the gusset. So just bear that in mind with your stitches because if your stitches are coming off the edge, they're gonna get snipped. So you can do that now if you want to. When you're sewing this panel on, make sure that the handle is folded down out of the way so you're not gonna accidentally sew through it. Okay, so if you haven't already, you can now snip into the seam just there. So you're just literally just snipping down to the cutout. Definitely no further than that. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna get the bottom edge of your gusset. There we go. And we're gonna match the center mark on the bottom edge to the center mark on the bottom edge of this main panel. Then we're gonna clip it along the rest of this panel. So we're gonna sew that on the machine exactly the same as last time. So you're going from the cutout corner on each edge. And again, if you want to, you can snip into the gusset now. That way, if your stitching goes off the edge, it's not really a problem. So you're just snipping into the gusset where the cutout corner is, no further. And I'll take that over to the machine and sew it with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now that we've snipped into the gusset and then sewn the top and bottom, what should happen is the sides, if we've got all the centers correct, should match up perfectly. So you should just be able to clip the side of the gusset to the side of the main panel. Now, if your center marks were off, then you can end up with like one of them being slightly different. Don't worry too much about it. So long as it's not wildly off, you shouldn't have a problem. So I'm gonna clip the other side together as well. And now I'll take that over to the sewing machine and sew both of those sides. And just like we did with the top and bottom, we're going from the cutout corners to the cutout corners using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So what you should have on each corner is stitching that comes right up and meets those cutout corners. So now that's done, we can fit our binding. Now, if you have double fold binding, you can simply fold it over. If you prefer, you can use waterproof canvas. So I've cut mine 
at about one and a quarter inches wide by the length of the fabric. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my seam roller to roll down the center like this and it's going to create a nice crisp fold for me to use. So I've already done the rest of my binding so I will use that first. Now I'm going to start on the bottom edge for this one. I'm literally just going to wrap it around the seam like that. So this is how I do my binding. There's loads of ways to do binding. This is how I feel like I get a much nicer result. So this is my preferred way of doing it. I clip it around the whole seam in one go. Now I'm going to sew it this way up. So I'm going to be able to see what I'm doing when I'm doing that, which means when I'm clipping it, I'm going to be looking at it from here because I want to make sure my stitches are covered on this side. This is the side I'm not going to notice when I'm sewing. So go ahead and clip it up to a corner. Now for these corners, what we're going to do, we're actually just going to trim them down a little bit. I'm just going to cut a little diagonal like that. Make sure you do not cut your stitching. And then I'm going to clip it right before the corner. Then I'm going to clip it right after the corner. And I'm just going to kind of press that in so that I get like this neat little fold. So it is the inside of a duffel bag, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be absolute perfection. You're never going to see this um, because obviously as a duffel bag, it's, it's always going to be full. That's its purpose. Um, so I'm not too worried about how these corners come out, but I do find that this gives the neatest result. So you just clip it right before the corner and then I clip it right after the corner. But don't forget, first of all, to just trim these down. It will give a neater result. Okay, and then I literally just kind of press it so it's got a fold. Just like that. So I'm going to wrap the binding all the way around. When you get back to the start, you can just trim that down. And this will be the same if you're using a cotton bias binding. I'm just going to fold that edge over and then clip it into place. Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew it with this side up. I find that easiest. And as you can see here, my stitching's showing. So as I get there, I'm going to make sure that my binding is covering my stitching. I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver to hold it in place as I go. And when I get to the corners, I'm just going to try and get that to fold into a nice neat fold, just a single fold as I go over it to hold it in place. I do recommend using a matching color thread because it's going to make your binding look much neater. And especially then if you miss something on the first try, you can go around with a second thread and no one will notice. For the binding, we're using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. As you reach the corners, you want to actually do a 90 degree turn. You don't want to go around in a curve. So as you come up to the corner, your seam allowance technically is going to reduce. It's going to feel like you're doing a smaller seam allowance. But you just want to keep going until you get to the corner and then you can do a 90 degree angle along. As you're sewing the binding on, watch out for the bottom of the bag getting caught on the machine. Um, just take it slow because this bit is going to make a difference to how the finished bag looks. Okay, so we're ready to attach the back panel. So we're going to do exactly the same as we did with the front panel. And we're going to start by matching up the center marks on this one with the center mark on the zip gusset and then clip this together. Just like we did, just like we did last time, we're going to snip into the gusset just where that cutout corner is. And then I'm going to sew this top edge here with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. 
But while I'm at it, I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the bottom edge. So just like we did with the other panel, we're gonna pull the sides out. Now, if you don't snip in, this won't work. So that's, that's why we snipped into the gusset on each of these. So don't forget to do that. Now we're gonna just clip the sides together here. I'm gonna take that over to the machine and sew both of these sides again with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So we're ready to add the binding to this side. First of all though, I'm just gonna trim these corners down again. And then I'm gonna attach the binding in exactly the same way. And I'm gonna start from the bottom edge. When you're sewing on this last bit of binding, it can be a little bit awkward because the bag is quite big. So don't be afraid to just squish it and maneuver it into place but always make sure that you're leaving your needle in when you're adjusting and don't sort of move the needle around too much. Okay, so there we have it. That is our bag. So you can go ahead now and turn it out. Okay, so for each of the corners, you wanna kind of poke it out with your finger, press the binding toward the gusset so that it's pressed all the way around in the same direction. Okay, this will take a little bit of time because of all the stabilizer but it's gonna give you a really neat finish if you just spend a bit of time doing this. Once your bag is finished, you can go ahead and attach your crossbody strap or you can give it a press with the iron if, if your bag's looking a little bit creased, giving it a press with the iron might be a good idea. So there you have it, all done. And there's our finished bag. So. I think it turned out really nicely. Um, we actually filmed the overhead a couple of days ago, so we took it away for a couple of days to try out. And yeah, we just love this bag. It's just, it's worked out brilliantly, hasn't it? Yeah, you've done, so. done a really good job. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Normally at the end of a tutorial, we would then show you a sneak peek of our next pattern. Um, but actually Adam's gonna explain why we're not mm. gonna show you a sneak peek this time. So yeah, a few months ago, I was approached to make a pattern for the Bag of the Month Club, which is kind of a big deal, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, in the bag making world, so quite a privilege. It does mean though, that it's all top secret at the moment, so I can't actually show you anything. But on the 15th of July, the early bird access to the subscription goes live. All the links are below. Uh, I hope you really like it, uh, and look forward to actually revealing what it's all gonna be. Uh, but that's our next project in the works, isn't it? Yeah, so if you've not heard of the Bag of the Month Club before, it's like a, a joint effort between three designers to do three months of patterns. So it's yeah. pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's good to be part of. So thanks for joining us for this video and we will see you soon for our next one.